Today, we're going to be taking a look at Dawn Ultra free and clear dishwashing detergent to find out if you can use it as an insecticide, specifically in this case, to kill wasps, yellow jackets. These are the weather parameters going on right now. It feels like 79. Of course, it warmed up much quicker after I headed out to do this. We've had two lightning strikes in the last 48 hours. Some unstable weather there. 458 lightning strikes this year. So that gives you the weather update. Let's go on to other things. Let's look at the sky. That's almost as good as looking at the weather channel on TV. Looks unstable, but we're going to head out anyway because I have a request. Someone sent me these pictures. This is a picture of a grader on a farm. And look what's in the blade area right there. Paper wasp nest, specifically yellow jackets. Yellow jackets make their nests out of cellulose. And there it is, in a bad position right on the ground. You might think that if it's on the ground, people could get stung. And in this case, that happened. See? One of the little boys went by and was stung by a wasp. And they need to use the farm equipment. So I said, you just give me that address and I'll get right over there. And I thought to myself, what a great opportunity to test a detergent in these bottles which are generically available on Amazon I got these you get them all different sizes you can get them in packs of six dirt cheap and we're gonna add Dawn ultra free and clear dish detergent dish liquid and why because it's going to work as an insecticide I'm going to explain how it does that later but the most important thing is most of the people around here are on wells their water is ultimately going to make its way down to the drinking water. So something that's biodegradable like Dawn Ultra is great because Dawn believes in the safety and quality of products, it says here. The only brand trusted by rescue workers to help save wildlife. So if you're going to spray bugs with something and they're stinging insects and you have to knock them down, I'm going to say let's go with Dawn Ultra instead of any of the other pesticides that you see sold in the garden centers, for example. Oh, the temperature did go. 86 degrees. And look at this. Drive through a couple of rainstorms on my way there. It'll clear up. I'm not worried about it. Not only that, the material that I'm using, it won't matter what happens to it after we spray it on the insects. Now I'm at the farm. They have horses very near to the location where these paper wasps are. Yellow jackets. They're not friendly. Look how well hidden they are in that tall grass next to that grater. That's why it was an unpleasant surprise to that little boy. We're very close to them right now. And I'm going to walk you through the whole thing because we're going to test it out. I mean, why use an insecticide off the shelf or some chemical that uh, may not be safe to be around when you can just use Dawn Ultra. Look how inexpensive it is. We're doing two tablespoons per gallon of fresh water. And here's the uh, yellow jacket nest right on the ground. And because it's been raining recently, we can see that they're actively replenishing that outer layer of cellulose. This is how they get the name paper wasp. But there are lots of species of wasps that make their nests out of paper. And you're going to see inside this one too because I'm going to cut it apart. But I'm going to spray it and uh, we're going to get them under control. What happens when a degreaser like Dawn Ultra Free and Clear goes onto the body of any insect? Well, it defeats their waxy coating that's known as the cuticle. And it dissolves it away, and now the water will seep in through the spiracles. Because, you may not know this, insects don't breathe through their mouth. It's pretty amazing. They respirate through their abdomens. So you see those pulsing abdomens? They have a head, a thorax, and then the abdomen. Now these wasps are not happy to have me here. No big surprise there. They're defending their nest. What's in the nest? You can see those later too. Larvae eggs, pupa that are hatching out, and of course all the workers and a queen, a nice big one. So these are non-perennial nests, which means up in this neck of the woods, northeastern United States, they don't use the same nest year after year. They use it for one season, and then during the winter it all decomposes and the queens have flown out and they start again in the spring. Each queen that winters over starts her own 
nest. And that's how they end up in places like this. Now, I'm a big fan of insects overall. Bald face hornets, European hornet, European hornets, yellow jackets, you name it. But normally they're up in trees or they're high on the soffit of the barn or something like that. So they're sheltered from weather, but they're not down where people walk. Here we have horses and we have kids. And we've got owners of the farm that want to use this piece of farm equipment. The minute you go to hook up to this, and it's only going to get bigger as the summer progresses, uh, they would be all over the farmer that's trying to hook up his piece of equipment. You just heard the horses in the background. Not a good spot. Now sometimes we can take a nest of yellow jackets or paper wasps, which are much more mellow. Those are the brown and amber colored ones. These are not so easy to relocate. In fact, one of the children brought up, can we relocate it? Well, we could, but uh, it's difficult to reattach something like this. Plus, they're going to be extremely defensive while we try to do it. And you should know that while I'm filming this, and even when I ultimately spray them down with Dawn Ultra dish soap, that I'm wearing a full protective bee suit. So my face is protected, my body's protected, and my hands. I have goat skin gloves for my hands. So you shouldn't be playing around with wasps or other stinging insects for that matter without understanding the disposition, the level of defensiveness that they're going to have, and then of course have the ability to protect your skin from being stung. And if you have sensitivities to bee stings, sensitivities to wasp stings, and you could go into anaphylaxis. You have no business fooling around with stinging insects to begin with. So always call someone in. Now I came over to do this for free. Why? Because I want to look at the way the nest is constructed. It's a great opportunity to show these kids what is going on in a wasp nest and help maybe remove some of the stress that they have after being stung. So education can really help with that. And this nest is just in a bad spot. So we're going to take it out. I'm going to start spraying them down with my Dawn Ultra Free and Clear that's been mixed up, as I mentioned before. Two tablespoons per gallon. Now you could put more of the soap in the water per gallon, but that's been demonstrated not to have any greater effect. Remember, we're increasing the wetting ability of the water with the soap. And we're ruining their ability to breathe through the spiracles in their abdomen. So that's what this spray does. But when you put it all together economically, let's think about that. Other than the fact that we're not going to pollute the environment this way, we have a biodegradable soap. Uh, it's cheap. So just a couple of tablespoons, you could really make a lot of it. If you had a big situation, this works on all insects. If you had a big situation, you could, of course, uh, mix this up in one of the garden sprayers that you pump up. And you want to make the adjustment so it doesn't shoot a solid stream. We want it to spritz a little bit so it mixes with air and creates some suds as it goes out. And now we can see as we've cut away the outer layers of this paper wasp nest, these yellow jackets, we can see that they have lots of layers protecting them, providing thermal protection, but it takes a lot of maintenance to keep up with it. I'm going to cut it all away. I'm going to remove the brood. I'm going to remove the queen. And I'm going to take away any incentive they might otherwise have to come back and reconstruct their nest here. Now at the end of the year when you find a wasp nest like this uh, and it's empty because the cold weather comes and they finish their time, they finish their season, they don't reuse these nests. These are non-perennial. So what they do do is come back in the spring as queens and they all start new nests individually. So what we're looking at here, this colony of yellow jacket wasps began with just a single queen. And she started laying eggs and before you know it, workers emerged from their cells and they took over brood rearing and taking care of things. So ultimately all the queen had to do was lay eggs and then foragers go out and they eat meat. Now, the forager themselves, when they go out and they're grabbing caterpillars and other pests that are making them beneficial as insects, really, uh, when they bring them back, that adult wasp can't eat. 
those proteins. What they do is they bring it back and they feed the larvae. And the larvae eat the meat products, usually the thorax of some insect or the whole uh, caterpillar or something like that, whatever they've gotten. And then during digestion, those pupae, those larvae, before they go into the pupa state, are going to ooze out a reward for these foragers to eat. So it's an exchange, which entices them, of course, to go and get more insects and protein resources and bring them back so the larvae will reward the forager with each trip. And we're going to show you those later too, but this shows the inner structure. So this is what's been protected. Look at all the layers of cellulose around them. This is a lot of work. And you can see that some of the larvae are moving there in their cells. And we're just taking care of them. So I'm pretty satisfied with the way this works. If you had a hole in the ground or something like that with yellow jackets, because often people do discover those, you can mix the same solution up, spray it in there, and adjust your nozzle so that it makes it um, mix with water a little better and air. If you do a solid stream, you won't get the same effect. It probably would work okay, but adjusting the nozzle to a wide pattern is a little bit better, I think. There's a nice big one. And the question you might ask is, are they, do they suffer, do they feel pain? Well, we don't have any evidence that insects feel pain. So obviously, and we like to say, are they happy, are they sad? What they're doing is trying to survive, period. So it's not about happiness or sadness. They're just trying to do what they're coded to do genetically. So when a large animal is in close proximity to their nest, they're going to go out and they're going to sting and attack. Now, honeybees, for example, if they sting a person, they leave the stinger in the person's skin and the honeybee dies. When it comes to wasps, their stingers are not barbed. And when they sting, they can sting over and over and the insect does not die and it doesn't lose its stinger. So we can see pretty clearly here that Dawn Ultra dish soap works pretty good considering all it is is water and soap and I'm going to take these apart of course we're going to take them back and let the kids look them over we're going to explain what's in there I will show you the eggs we will show you the larvae and we'll show you capped pupa that's what we see right there with those light semi-translucent caps on the cells there which inside this nest all point down and of course, we'll scrape this away so that they can use the implement so the kids can come and go in this area without a problem. The horses won't get stung and the wasps will not come back and rebuild here because we're removing all of their reproductive material, the queen, the eggs, the larvae, the pupa that are capped. And there will be nothing here for them to go back and start fresh from. Now normally, yes, it's better to do this at night because you would be sure to have most of the resident wasps in the nest. But uh, in the daytime right now, because they have a schedule to keep, I thought it would come in this time of day and just eliminate the nest. Foragers will return, but they'll just live out their lives without uh, being able to reproduce. And they'll be drinking nectar. They get nectar from flower sources and everything else in the absence of the larvae. So that's a nice big one right there. I'm not great at spotting which one is the queen. This one looks like a candidate for me. I see one. So what do you see? What is all here in front of you? Oh, there's one right next to you. There's a wasp on me too. Okay. And these, what are these laying right here? We just talked about them. Larvae. Larvae. Yeah. And then over here we have some dead wasps. What else do we find in there? What's in the little nest piece that you're holding? Uh, more uh, larvae. And what else? Eggs. Eggs. They lay eggs. And like that And did you find some of those eggs? Did you right tear there. one open? Uh-huh. So let's see in here. We got some eggs in here. Oh yeah, there they are. There's some eggs too. I hear them. If I let the sunshine go in here. There we go. 
I see new wasps. You see new wasps? Oh, you're right. Two. One. One. So now you won't get stung again. Does that make you happy? Hey. It does. Where did they sting you? Behind their butts. I know, but where did they sting you? Right on the booby. Oh, okay. Interesting anatomy reference. Okay, guys. Hello. I'm keeping that. <laughs> He's so cute. Look, you can see his little teeth there. All right. His little teeth. Oh, you can see little jaws poking out. Look at that. I see one. I'll be moving. On top, Jane. On his hat, Jane. I want to see how it, I want to see it. Mm. Go over here. Hat, Jane, <laughs> also, there's a bunch. You'll be able to sit here and watch it while I do chores. Uh oh. No lava, don't roll away. There's one. Hey, there's one. There's uh -huh. two over there. So that's it. They have chickens and African guinea fowl, which will happily eat those remaining larvae and the pupa, and nothing will go to waste. And we've got a satisfied uh, situation there. No more yellow jackets on the ground, no more kids being stung, no more horses being bothered, and they can use their farm implementation. So I hope you enjoyed watching, and definitely, Don Ultra Free and Clear works to kill bugs. So I'm Frederick Dunn and this has been The Way to Be Backyard Beekeeping Special Episode Now the remainder of this is just going to be slow motion of some of the sequences you've already seen for those who want to see it again and that's the end of the narration Thanks for watching and I invite you to subscribe for future episodes that you may learn from Don Ultra, free and clear. The link is down in the video description. Thanks for watching.
Yeah. Mm -hmm. 